In this week's video, I'd like to take a change of pace. Uh, I've entitled this video, A Tale of Two Masses. And I want to just make some observations about the recent controversy within the Roman Catholic Church uh, caused by a document that uh, Pope Francis released back on the 16th of July in which he essentially wishes to suppress the old or traditional Latin Mass, which I'm representing here with this St. Joseph Daily Missal. My copy is from 1957, and as I understand it, uh, most traditional Catholics use a 1962 Missal. This is the Missal in use today, which came in and around the year 1970, and it is called the Novus Ordo sometimes disrespectfully, sometimes respectfully, but it's the new order of the Mass versus the old order of the Mass. And what Pope Francis is seeking to do is to suppress this older Mass. This uh, on the left was the Mass that was said in Catholic churches when I was a boy. Uh, my best friend Ignacio and his family went to a Mass that was said in, uh, in this way, in Latin with the uh, priest facing the altar, with uh, the people following along in their missals or um, saying their rosaries, but having very little interaction, um, participation, I should say, in the Mass. In the newer Mass, uh, things are much more like a Protestant service in that the Mass is said in English, there is congregational singing, typically, which there wouldn't have been in the older Mass. Um, the priest typically faces the people, and it has much more of a sense of a communion service here versus a sacrifice at an altar here on the left. To, to add a little context, this Mass on the left was not the only Mass said in the Western Church for the first 1970 years. Um, the original Mass in Rome was in Greek. Uh, this Mass changed gradually over time. For instance, uh, the Nicene Creed is in here, and of course the Creed wasn't agreed until 381. So various elements um, accumulated were added to it over time. There were other uses in the West. There was a Gallican rite, uh, there was Ambrosian, uh, there was one in Spain, uh, Mozarabic, I think it may be pronounced. But eventually this Mass, represented by the Missal on the left, uh, displaced the other Masses in the West and was used fairly constantly until it was displaced in 1970 by the new Mass on the right. In around 2007, Pope, Pope Benedict allowed uh, individual priests to use this right on the left again at their discretion. But this was invented rather rapidly in the 1960s in an effort to return to the sources. And um, in recent years, there's been a growing movement within Roman Catholicism, within the traditionalists, to return to use of this, this uh, older usage, the older Mass. And I believe that Pope Francis sees that as uh, divisive and wants to lock down the new Mass for everyone. So what I'd like to do in the video is talk a bit about the differences, just in case you aren't familiar with them. One of the problems that the traditionally minded Catholics have with the new Mass, at least some of them have with the new Mass, is that it eliminates these prayers uh, before Mass said by the priest. One of them I'd like to point out to you is this one, the preparation for Mass here. So looking more closely at the prayer, it says, Receive, O Holy Trinity, one God, this holy sacrifice of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which I, your unworthy servant, desire now to offer to your divine majesty. So the priest himself is going to offer the sacrifice which consists of the body and blood of the Lord. By the hands of this your minister, repeating that he is giving the sacrifice with all the sacrifices which have ever been or will be offered to you in union with that most holy sacrifice offered by the same Christ our Lord at the Last Supper and on the altar of the cross. So Christ's sacrifice 
on the altar of the cross is the same sacrifice that he offered at the Lord's Supper. And then this sacrifice of the Mass and all the other sacrifices of the Mass are in union with that sacrifice. But clearly Christ sacrificing the altar is a propitiatory sacrifice, which this uh, claims to be as well. In the older Mass, called the traditional Mass by some people and the Tridentine Mass by others, after the Gospel is read, after the Creed is said, you come to the Offertory. And the first Offertory prayer has the priest saying, Accept, O Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, this spotless host, which I, your unworthy servant, offer to you, my living and true God, to atone for my numberless sins. So this sacrifice of the Mass is to atone for the priest's sins, offenses, and negligences. And he does it on behalf of all here present, and likewise for all faithful Christians, living and dead, that it might profit him and them as a means of salvation to life everlasting. Another couple of pages along, you find this prayer. In a humble spirit and with a contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice so be offered in your sight this day as to please you. Then you come to this prayer to the Trinity, accept most holy Trinity this offering which we are making to you in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. So it is in remembrance of his passion, resurrection, and ascension. In honor of Blessed Mary, every Virgin, etc., and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. And may they de deign to intercede in heaven for us who honor their memory here on earth. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our advantage and that of all his holy church. So again, it's a sacrifice and it's uh, to aid in salvation. There's more sacrificial language here in what's called the canon of the mass where there's reference made to the offerings of Abel and Abraham and Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice and a spotless victim which uh, the priest prays that the holy angel will bring to God's altar above, and that those who sh share in the sacrifice of the altar shall receive the body and blood of Christ and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. The uh, new Mass, in addition to being Protestant-friendly in that it's said in the vernacular and includes congregational singing, and the activity, the participation of the congregation is said to downplay the pr propitiatory nature of the sacrifice of the Mass. And as we see, if we look through the beginning here, we do not see those preparatory prayers that we saw in the older Mass, where the priest talks about his sacrifice and how it's in union with the sacrifice of the cross and the sacrifice of the Lord's Supper. But um, you do see things that might offend Protestants, um, starting here with this confession, which is like the confession in the older Mass. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, and all the angels and saints, and you to pray for me to the Lord our God. So you're asking Mary um, to pray for you, asking saints to pray for you, and saying that Mary was always a virgin. So it's not clear to me that uh, all Protestants would uh, find that sort of language acceptable. Again, the notion that I've heard bandied about among the more traditional cir circles is that the new Mass is somehow designed to be acceptable to Protestants. And as I said, it may be more favorable to Protestants. We may have... Uh, fewer roadblocks. The New Order does include sacrificial language here with a humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. And then the people say, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and the good of all his holy church. But it doesn't really tie the sacrifice so closely to what's happening, the action on the altar, as the other form did. And the Book of Common Prayer, for instance, uh, I have um, 
facsimile of uh, the 1559 Book of Common Prayer here. Book of Common Prayer does talk about the Eucharist as a sacrifice. It does so in reference to Hebrews chapter 13 and the notion that the uh, Eucharist is a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. When you come to the beginning of the canon of the Mass, you have a preface just before the Sanctus, and this is in the New Mass still. And some of the prefaces here in the New Mass could be problematic for Protestants. Before we get to the troublesome ones, I'll say that with most of them, I have no issues at all. Preface 1 on the Passion of the Lord says, For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. So this is putting an emphasis on Christ's work on the cross, rather than Christ's work in the Eucharist, as supposed by the um, older Missal. Preface 2 of Easter talks about his death being our ransom from death. Preface 5 of Easter talks about Christ's oblation on the cross, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sac sacrifice in the reality of the cross. Preface 1 of the Sundays in Ordinary Time talks about his paschal mystery, which freed us from the yoke of sin and death and summoned us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a holy nation. He's called us out of darkness into wonderful light, very biblical language. And preface 4 of the Sundays in Ordinary Time talks about his birth, which brought renewal, his suffering, which canceled our sins, rising from the dead, opening the way to eternal life, all focusing on the work of Christ, historical work of Christ in Palestine in the first century AD, and not the work of a priest at an altar here in 2021. So, preface one of the Most Holy Eucharist is one that I think would cause Protestants difficulty because it implies that the sacrifice of the Mass is another sacrifice, like sacrifice, Christ's sacrifice on the cross. He is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim. So, uh, it's a pattern. It's not a unique sacrifice, but it's the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice. And he was the first to offer himself as a victim, but one infers from this that others have offered him as the saving victim as well. There are several Eucharistic prayers in the New Missal. Eucharistic prayer number one is very close to the first Eucharistic prayer um, in the Old Mass. The first Eucharistic prayer does include this language of sacrifice that we saw in the other older Tridentine Mass. Um, we, your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, holy victim, spotless victim, bread of eternal life, chalice of everlasting salvation. Be, be, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a sincere and kindly countenance and accept them as you are pleased to accept the gifts of Abel, Abraham, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. So again, we do have that language of um, sacrifice here, a sacrifice consisting of the body and blood of Christ, uh, as in the older Mass. In the second Eucharistic prayer, you find this language, which I think is fairly easy to reconcile with a Protestant understanding of the Eucharist. We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. So there's not that tone of uh, sacrifice uh, that's uh, expiatory or propitiatory here, but rather it has the sense more of a, of a, a sacrifice of thanksgiving 
But here in Eucharistic prayer number three, which is the prayer that I've heard most often in the local Roman Catholic churches near me, you do have that sense that the oblation on the altar is being tied to and identified with Christ's sacrifice on the cross, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And I have that same sense here in Eucharistic prayer number four, where it says, we await his coming in glory. We offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you. So his body and blood being offered today in this mass is the sacrifice acceptable to him, a sacrifice that brings salvation to the whole world. That sacrifice that's being done at the altar that day is bringing salvation to the whole world like the sacrifice of the cross did. So to summarize, I would say that the older mass, the so-called Tridentine mass, or the, the traditional Latin mass, more clearly describes the sacrifice on the altar during the mass as being a propitiatory sacrifice to God and connects it more clearly, I think, than does this newer Mass. So um, that's all, about all I have to say. Um, I have heard traditionalists say that the new Mass was designed to draw in Protestants, but I think I pointed out that it does have some roadblocks to the typical Protestant understanding of the theology of the cross. This would cause even uh, Protestants some difficulty, although they would feel more comfortable with the congregational singing and the Mass being in the vernacular language and the participation of the uh, congregation in the service. Still, there are places where this uses language that would cause me trouble. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Um, Please remember to like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, 